in June. Third Thursday in June. Dollar, drop around. Noble Winery at, at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Noble Winery. Where that, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, up on the hill somewhere. Hard Scrabble Road. Yeah, Hard Scrabble Road. Okay, there you go, caller. Thank you for calling. Okay, thank um, you. Bye-bye. Pat, what do you think about all this? You say you haven't said a word. No, I don't. <laughs> I, Helen does the talking. She, she oh, always, she's, a, she's a talker? Yeah. She always makes me talk. Oh, okay. Does she come I'm her backup. You, you, you're her backup. Okay. Yes. All right, well, friends, um, again, you're here. I just want to conclude, and uh, we got John Hamels coming on with an editorial comment. Uh, again, the quilt show, June 1, 2, 3, and it says right here, 10 to 5, uh, and uh, Sunday it's uh, 12 to 4, right? That's right. 10 mm -hmm. to 5 on Saturday and Friday, and uh, there'll be a huge number of quilts on display. This is going to be done at the... Uh, the new winery, which you can see right on this, uh, uh, right on the uh, Route 20, where the big pink elephant is, which will be well wearing that quilt. Right. Uh, halfway between Westfield and Portland, and you the, can't miss it. Go ahead. The winery will be open to the public, and they will be selling wine. Uh, there is a small charge to get into the quilt show itself. Okay, and that's the Bricks Winery, and it's probably worth every penny. But they probably, you have food there, vendors, and you do have vendors. You have any food? Or? We have vendors. We won't have food this you year. You don't want them slopping it on the quilts. Well, <laughs> we're going to fill the space with quilts. If it's full. Of, it's going to be a quilt flurry. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate having you come, Helen, Helen Sager, and uh, I, I, Pat uh, Seisel. And uh, it's great to have you here. And I hope you have a wonderful quilt show. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. Now we got coming up as usual. This guy who uh, definitely uh, shoots from the hip, our editorial commentator and chief editor of editorials, we have John Hamels. Dr. John. Good morning, Reed, and good morning to our guests. And my title changes by the week, I noticed. <laughs> Boy, you know, ladies, uh, the phone was in a flurry back there. I'm the voice of the phone, and uh, the, the, the phone was just ringing. I couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> Well, anyways, this morning I just want to chat a little bit, read about <clears throat> some things that are going around right now in the county. Well, Kathy Young was here last month, uh, last week, and she was uh, at uh, a function in Ripley. And this just made me think a little bit about what's going on uh, countywide, regionally. There's a lot of talk about uh, a regional high school and so forth, and there are people that are saying, oh, this is a really good idea, and there's other people say it's a really bad idea. Why would we do this? Well, you know, Randy and I were having a little chat before uh, the show this morning, and he was telling me about his job, and we were talking about the amount of technology that's required in his job today, and we were both saying, boy, we, neither one of us took any of this sort of thing in school. Folks, when we start looking at schools, schools are going to be different as they are today from when we were in school. We have to be supportive of these changes because if we keep doing the way we do business in our schools, we are going to fall way behind. Now, I'm talking about in our, in our county now. I can't control the whole country, but when we start to look at some innovative ways of, of educating our children, we have to get away from the phrases of, it was good enough for me in my day, or I walked, you know, two miles in the snow, and it took me an hour to back and forth, or why should we fix it, it's not broke. Folks, it's moving ahead, and we're falling behind. And what I'm getting at is, if we look at regional high schooling, if we look at different constructs, the way we shape our schools, and that's what's coming down the road, we need to look at our small schools. They can't keep up. And then we get into the battle of taxes. So they say, don't raise taxes, but at the same time, we want progress. Uh, one's got to give. And one of the things that you should start looking at are these mergers, these annexations, uh, regionalism, regional high school, and so forth. Because these students are going to be the ones that are going to be putting the IV into us when we're old. They're the ones that are going to be building our futuristic homes. They're going to be the doctors. They're going to be the technicians. They're going to be doing the things that we need here in Chautauqua County. I don't care about the rest of the world. We need to make sure that our students that are in kindergarten today and coming up through the ranks have the best progressive education that we can afford in our county but we're going to have to change the way our schools look back to you Reed okay. consolidation seems to be the only answer uh, how can a little tiny town like uh, any of the little towns around here support the cost of today's modern high school it's it's just impossible with the technical knowledge you need uh, the teaching, the laboratories, the science, it's just, it's becoming unbearable. 
And the taxes in this county, remember, already are the highest taxes in the United States. And there's a huge new tax coming on because we've been, well, what the uh, county legislature did was to shift the costs from last year, a lot of them, into this year. So now we have double costs this year, and there's no way to raise the difference in money, excepting local real estate taxes. Stand back. We're going to have the minority leader um, <clears throat> on next week in the legislature. Lori uh, will be here, and uh, she will tell us a little bit about this. Okay, enough. We're on to the newest uh, thing in God's earth, and that is a huge discussion. 56% of the country admit that they think it's a terrible mistake to be in Afghanistan. Three quarters of the country says we should get out immediately. Stop losing lives and spending billions of dollars on a lost cause. Uh, nobody's been able to, to win. They don't tell us what win is, incidentally. They just say we're there to win. And we're protecting America. How? These, these natives ain't going to come across and start shooting Americans, believe me, unless they're right out there in Afghanistan. They're shooting a lot of them. We're not even getting a reasonable count. They don't tell us the full count. They don't count people that are shift, slept off to a different hospital. Well, it goes on and on and on. Anyway, we have somebody who wrote a nice long article about that, Vicki Westling, in the uh, Dunker Preserver, and I wanted her comments on what she, <coughs> what, how, how her take is. And she's a, an intelligent member, thinking member of our community, and she does quite a bit of uh, retrospective uh, thought and uh, writes it out, puts it in the paper. Not to mention books. She writes books, too. So anyway, Vicki, uh, where are you from? Let's, let's back off. Where am I bit. from? Yeah. I live in Dunkirk You're, now. Uh, right. where, where did you come I, from? I grew originally? up originally in Florida. Florida? What part of Florida? Uh, Sarasota, Bradenton, Sarasota. Okay, and then you came up here somehow or the other. How did you find your way up here? I, well, I worked for a company <laughs> that um, they did various things throughout the the United States and so I had to come up and close a deal in Dunkirk uh -huh. uh, that had been set and when I came up I met my husband who was a police officer I wasn't arrested <laughs> <laughs> but I met him and uh, we've been together ever since 36 years which is a uh, police Richard a, Wesling yeah police have a, a tough career and marriage <laughs> the, the one yeah. some often doesn't mix with the other they, have a very high divorce rate, so you really st struggle through nicely. It, it huh? has been a it, it's been a wonderful time. He's <laughs> uh -huh. the love of my life, and uh -huh. it's been great. And what's he doing now? Is he still? Uh, uh, no, uh, no, he he retired. He uh -huh. retired. Thank goodness. You know, it, it was uh, at the time that he was a police officer, things were much different. We didn't have some of the things we have today. We had uh, certainly a good deal of crime, but uh, not like we have today. So. I'm well, we, out of it. we've got the ongoing so-called laughably war on drugs, which is just oh, madness. Terrible, and terrible. We've lost the war years ago. And they just won't admit it. And so right. they were spending billions of dollars uh, doing busts on houses and throwing people out uh, into jail and ruining families and everything. And of course, they're killing each other because of this going on. And uh, there's no winning here. There's no right. winning. Yeah. We're just losing everything. Well, now, more of course, drugs than a, ever before. There's the, the push to legalize marijuana, and that has its pros and cons. And, um, you know, it's, it's a bad thing. It's, uh, people get into drugs, and they, can't, they lose control, yeah, and, and our course, children are there. We have put control of drugs into the hands of the criminals. That's right. If they were legal, people could go to the drugstore. They could control them <laughs> and say, you try to get them off them and certainly wouldn't be encouraging them to go on. That's the biggest problem. Right. So criminals do everything to get you on drugs. Yeah. And uh, you give, even giving you free drugs for a while just to get you hooked so that they've got you. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, it's a crazy, it's a craziness. Yeah. It's costing us billions. Right. Well, you know, and, and just an aside, I had a student, a uh, second grader, who told me that they were going to stick a needle in their arm. And when I, and I think I wrote about this in the paper, and I said, why would you do that? And they said, well, my mommy's boyfriend does it, and it makes him feel good. Oh, you know, so you, you think, you know, drugs are everywhere, and they start young. Oh, sure, and there, there's just no beating it. Uh, as long as we make it illegal and hide it behind the closed doors and the, all these busts going, you know, they're, they're worthless. Because right. the minute the cops disappear, there's somebody new on the street with the drugs. Absolutely. <laughs> and they're making, they're making billions out of it so that they sure. can pay off anybody. You know, you keep reading in the paper about judges and cops and... <laughs> And big guns and mayors and everything uh, taking money. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it's, 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 well, how can you turn down a million dollars, you know? 
in cash. In stuff. Cash. Yeah. No taxes. Right. <laughs> no taxes. That'd okay, so we're back to Afghanistan, another craziness. And incidentally, <sighs> a lot of our kids are coming back hooked on drugs, especially oh, marijuana, sure. from Afghanistan. And uh, it's a nightmare over there right now. Um, as a matter of fact, recently they were told they can't leave camp because <laughs> of that kid that went around and started, started killing everybody, mm -hmm. you know. He killed, a, I don't know, 13, 14, depending oh, on whose yeah. county you believe. Well, and of course, you know, he was suffering from a traumatic brain injury. Right, and here so, he was, and he'd asked for help. And he'd been, he'd been uh, deployed several times. And that's the problem with Afghanistan. You know, it doesn't matter to me mm -hmm. whether you're, what political party you're involved in. Afghanistan is a bad thing. They've had wars and civil wars and invasions since before Alexander the Great. That is a country that you're not going to win. Doesn't matter what you do, you're not going to win. You know, they have the mountains, the terrain, and when we went over there, uh, it was in October after 9-11 for the sole purpose of hunting down and killing or capturing Osama bin Laden. We did that. Get us out. Well, it's they time. tell Obama recently <clears throat> commented on it. Said we'll be there to, for at least another uh, twelve more years. Twelve years, anyway. Right. And it's uh, for what? For what? Well, <clears throat> you know, and when you look at that, and um, in the paper they came out, they said, you know, this is a symbolic gesture. This really doesn't have a lot of meat. It's just going to be for training purposes. The Afghans do not want us there. They don't want us there. Hamad Karzai came out three days after the trip and said. Well, you know, we still don't feel safe. My people still don't feel safe. So I don't, I'm not sure that this agreement is ever going to go anywhere. Well, you made a pact to do something, and now they're saying, well, now maybe we really don't want it. The, uh, pr the president's plane had not even gotten up in the air fully before there was a, the Taliban. Uh, went out and killed 12 more people and saying, take that, President Obama. Yeah, well, so, we, we just buried a kid up here. Uh, in uh, the, our area, who was shot by a supposedly friendly Afghanistan mm -hmm. who shot him dead anyway. Right. Uh, just, he was working with him, you know? <coughs> right. And uh, this is going on and on and on. Well, and if we're in Afghanistan for the purpose of training and providing security to the Afghan people, if our purpose for being there is to do that, then let's let a group of them go be trained somewhere off, the, off of that soil where they, they don't have, they're not put at danger every day. You know, and, and this is a different war. Afghanistan is a different war. When our fathers and grandfathers fought in World War I and World War II, and even in Vietnam and Korea, they knew their enemy. Today, we don't know our enemy. You know, we have the, the Al-Qaeda and Taliban. You know, they've got uh, bombs in their underwear, wanting to blow up the planes. So how do you fight a war like that? How do you fight that war where the people are terrorists, where they walk among you every day and you don't know what they're going to do next? How do we fight that war? We can't. It's a losing battle. And for us to agree to be there for 12 more years. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Um, I, uh, I sometimes, you know, well, of course, remember the arms makers are the rich and powerful. They're ones in charge, really. Mm -hmm. And they're making a bundle off this war. Well, a I bundle. agree, you know, there's money to be made, and, yeah, and sure. that's what happens. But we need to bring our money back. We need to bring our money back to this country mm -hmm. and deal with things that this country is dealing with, that, that we have. We have our children, our education system. We're fighting all kinds of things right here. Poverty. They've, we, uh, they've uh, lined up. A, first of all, uh, two years ago, they took half a trillion, trillion dollars out of Medicare for seniors. This year, they're announcing they want another half a trillion dollars, which leaves you with nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's got to go off to the war. Yeah. And they make lots of money. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a travesty. It truly is. And we're sending $2 billion a week over there. It's just it's Well, ridiculous. that's what they tell us, Vicki, but unfortunately, they lie like hell, yeah. <laughs> if I may put it that way. There may be more being spent, you think? Oh, you bet. Just like yeah. the number of deaths. They don't count, as I mentioned, people that die off in another hospital somewhere. Right. They say, well, that wasn't a battle, battlefield death. and uh, They don't count accidents. Now, there's right. been ten, 10 times more accidents than in any other war. Right. Well, and there have been almost 400 of our soldiers have been killed since Osama bin Laden was, was killed. 
Yeah, more and math when you though, think the about that, they tell us about it. Right. Yeah, you can but, double their figures, and you're not far off. You know, and, and they're not, it, you know, these traumatic brain injuries, the kinds of things that are happening, they're going over and over again. You know, one deployment and back, and another.